and let him ply his music. <laughs> I know, Ophelia. What's the matter? Oh, my lord. My lord, I have been so frightened. With what in the name of God? My lord, as I was sewing in my closet, Lord Hamlet, with his doublet all embraced, no hat upon his head, his stockings fouled, ungartered and down jived to his ankle, pale as his shirt, his knees knocking each other, and with a look so piteous in purport as if he had been lucid out of hell to speak of horrors, he comes before me. Mad for thy love. My lord, I do not know, but truly I do fear it. What said he? He took me by the wrist and held me hard. Then goes he to the length of all his arm, and with his other hand, thus, over his brow, he falls to such perusal of my face as he would draw it. Long stayed he so, at last a little shaking of mine arm, and thrice his head, thus waving up and down. He raised a sigh, so piteous and profound, as it did seem to shatter all his bulk and end his being. That done, he let me go, and with his head over his shoulder turned, he seemed to find his way without his eyes, for out of doors he went without their help, and to the last bended their light on me. Come, go with me. I will go seek the king. This is the very ecstasy of love whose violent property fordoes itself and leads the will to desperate undertakings as oft as any passion under heaven that does afflict our natures. I am sorry. What, have you given him any hard words of late? No, my good lord, but as you did command, I did repel his letters and denied his access to me. That hath made him mad. Oh, I am sorry that with better heed and judgment I had not quoted him. I feared he did but trifle and meant to rack thee, but beshrew my jealousy. Oh, by heaven, it is as proper to our age to cast beyond ourselves in our opinions as it is common for the younger sort to lack discretion. Come, go we to the king. This must be known, which being kept close might move more grief to hide than hate to utter love. Come. Mm -hmm.